Welcome to LTV Racing. Don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and we hope you enjoy the content that you're about to see. LPB GT3 Spin Series Round 8 Race 3 from Monza GP. Hi everyone and welcome back to LPB Racing for Round 8 of the LPB GT3 Sprint Series on Project Cars 2. This is Race 3 here from Monza and we're just starting our formation lap now. So Bidster is on pole position then in the Bentley. Remember, remember random grid for this race. So Bidster on pole with Neil Farmack behind him in second. So and then Nifty is in third so it could be a close race between the top three. And we've got Tim in fourth just coming through the chicane there just on the uh, on the warm-up lap we've got blake in fifth position in the ferrari uh, he's uh, he's hoping for a better run this time around Pash in sixth place in the audi and then ty in the aston martin hoping to actually finish a race here because he's had uh, disconnection after disconnection so he hopefully can finish a race here uh, and uh, get some good uh, points in for himself and then we've got Woo Woo in ninth place in the Mercedes. Teammate Neil, second place. Then we've got Scott in ninth in the Bentley. Not a good group position for him, and an even worse group position for Will in the Ferrari at the back of the grid, which is probably sort of a safe place to be, I suppose, if you uh, think about the first cor what the first corners like here at Monza. So all the cars warming up the tyres then, just uh, coming round into the first Lesmo, just every car. Just making sure the brakes are up to temperature, the tyres are up to a, a kind of an operating temperature. Uh, nice conditions here at, at Monza again. As ever, the beautiful Italian sunshine here descending on us at Monza as we go down out of Les out of the second Lesmo down to uh, the Ascari chicane. Just again, cars warm up the tyres, quite vigorous warming up there from Bidster in the Bentley. Wants plenty of heat into those tyres before the start of the race. There's Pash in the Audi, hoping for good results, and uh, TY hoping to, like I said before, hoping to actually get to finish a race. If you see one of the cars are sort of stopping and starting sometimes, or slowing down a bit, they're just warming up the uh, the brakes as Bidster warms up the, the the initial pressures in the tyres. A lot of people think weaving around doesn't put heat in the tyres. Doesn't necessarily put heat in them, but it puts friction into the tyre, and. Uh, it just helps generally get the pressures regulated for what you're about to do to them. So uh, obviously you don't want to go straight out on cold rubber because A, you'll have no grip because you'll have no heat. And also you'll have no no sort of a, a good operating pressure. You see Bidster doing that little mini weave there as he goes quickly from side to side. Just gets the pressures up in the tyre and uh, hoping to get a better... Uh, oh, a bit, bit, oh, bit vigorous there from Bids really trying to get some uh, front end pressure in those tyres so here we go then, ready for the start we'll, the cars will come around the Parabolica they will go in the middle of the track like Bids is doing there lining up for the race start, everyone else will line up behind him single file uh, style like it is on, from a safety car start and we will get on with this race 11 laps of Monza coming your way from LPB Racing don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button and we will be racing in a moment as the countdown is about to go off and we are racing here at Monza Nifty gets a good start right behind Neil Farmack as he, as he, as he went and uh, Nifty looking for a way through everyone else really compact together and Bids are still leading the way down to turn one defending the inside line to make sure Nifty can't come through Neil around the outside car to the outside we've had a car go straight on we'll have a look in a minute I think that's Tim who's gone straight on in the SLS everyone else through the first corner quite nicely there and Tim has been left going through the little chicane and he's rejoined somewhere he's uh, yeah there he is in the middle so he's rejoined in the middle somewhere there he is as everyone else comes up to the chicane after the Aston Martin of TY not lagged out this time so he's actually managed to start to race there in the Aston Martin into the chicane then Passion Tim together Woo on the inside of Tim as we come through the chicane Woo Woo eats curb though and no way through for the Mercedes driver and he loses a place to Pash as well Scott looks like he's had a mistake as Will darts out to overtake into the Lesmo and I think Will's got it let's have a look oh Scott's fighting him around the outside though not giving up in that Bentley at all Scott then keeps ahead in ninth place and the Bentley proving to be harder to pass than it looks so bids to lead the way then in the other one so it's uh, a Bentley in a lead then it's the Mercedes second of Neil Farmack Nifty's in third but he's got Blake and TY right behind him on his tail TY switched the, the sort of internet round and it seems to have worked wonders to a point as we'll have to see if it continues for the rest of the race but he's altered a few settings on it and it looks to have worked so keep it up TY let's see if we can keep a whole race with him in it 
It'd be good to see what the Aston Martin can do here compared to the rest. And you can see there on the straight that the TY and the Aston Martin right round the outside of Blake on the straight but on, on the brakes though the Ferrari much better on the brakes into Parabolica and the Ferrari gets ahead and Tim will now have a look at the inside of the Aston Martin but the Aston Martin should have the, the, the acceleration and the top end speed to go with it because it has quite a long gearbox the Aston Martin so it'll, there we are you see the top end speed of the Aston really coming into hand here and he's catching Blake up very quickly indeed as you go to the first corner Neil Farmer and Bids together into the first corner Neil Farmer around the outside of Bidster and he's got the lead off the Bentley driver and the Bentley driver tries to come back on the acceleration but can't quite do it and the Mercedes takes the lead Neil Farmack leads this race Nifty Dark Ninja in third Bidster just tucks him behind T White is ahead of Blake in the Aston Martin Tim has got Pash alongside him now so Tim's had a had a bad run out of the chicane and Pash gets alongside Woo Woo in the other Mercedes behind him as well three into three into the chicane got to try and fold yourself into here somehow boys as Tim breaks rather late there and goes into the corner Woo Woo goes a bit wide runs it a bit deep and that's not going to help him as he re as he rejoins. He's going to lose speed. Will will close up, but he'll not be able to get close enough for a pass. Scott making up the back of the field. Bids is back ahead of Neil though. Bids is back ahead of Neil, so he must have got a fantastic run through the chicane. And he's now back in the lead of the race. Nifty Dark Ninja means business here as well. As in the background, Will and a few others. Oh, uh, was, it, sorry, was it Will? No, it was Blake on the grass. Sorry, Blake on the grass in the Ferrari. And T.Y. and Tim go through. And Tim now looking for a way past T.Y. as Neil Farmack defends from Bidster into Ascari and holds the lead. As we see T.Y. on the inside in the Aston Martin. Tim round the outside in the Mercedes. Makes it stick. Tim is not afraid of anything. T.Y. is hung out to dry. Blake goes round the outside. Pash goes round the outside as well. as contact as we come out the corner. All the cars get very close together. Neil Farmack going for the lead. I don't know where to look here. Neil Farmack's going for the lead on the inside of the Parabolica. We'll have to see how, how that turns out in a moment. But this lot are absolutely mad. As we've got Woo Woo down the inside of Blake. Pash down the inside of T.Y. Into Parabolica. Incredible. Woo Woo takes uh, fifth place. We've got Pash and T.Y. alongside each other. T.Y. should hold on in the Aston Martin with a straight line speed. Back to the front, it is Bidster who he actually held the lead round Parabolica. And it's now Neil Farmack coming up alongside to take the lead back with the extra speed of the Mercedes. And he does so. Bidster goes back for the cutback though. They can't quite do it and Neil holds on. Everyone else into the chicane. Blake, TY very close to each other as well. TY gets shuffled out. I think he's got shuffled out. Let's have a look. Yes, he's got shuffled out. Back down to seventh place for TY. Woo Woo is now on the back of Tim so the two SLS is pulling away then as they get in fourth and fifth and Woo having a go at Tim now Tim defends the inside Woo Woo down the outside line and he'll have to be very brave to overtake Tim round here and he is being brave on the brakes round the outside and gets the inside for the next corner and Tim will now fight back on the undercut but Woo Woo with a fantastic move there on Tim absolute class and TY's gone off T.Y.'s gone off somewhere, he's at the back of the grid, he's had an off somewhere, I'm not quite sure where that'll have been, but he's had an off somewhere and uh, he's right at the back of the grid now, so not good for T.Y. But Neil's got pressure from Bids here, going under the GP circuit. And into Ascari we go, Neil Farmack holds the lead then, Bids to on the kerb in second, trying to keep with him, Nifty's doing very well in third, to keep in touch with the leaders. Meanwhile we've got further back, we've got Tim passing Blake around the outside, Blake defends, but Tim passes him around the outside. Oh, car off! Who's that? Nifty Dark Ninja is off at Ascari. You can see them rejoining the track in the far distance. Nifty's thrown it away from third place. He was doing so well, but just not consistent enough to keep the place. And goes down to, uh, to ninth. He wasn't around anyone, so it must have been his own mistake. We'll get replays on that in the uh, when we get to the halfway point. But we've got Pash here and Tim along uh, with each other. Tim should have the top end speed in the Merc and uh, Pash is following him he's trying to follow him and he's looking for a way through doesn't know whether to go right or left he's going to try and follow Tim through here as we go down to the chicane into the chicane we go and breaking hard now from 170 miles an hour down to zero, down to almost zero as Pash has to cut the chicane and Tim and Blake make contact Scott gets in there and hits Blake and can't quite avoid things as everyone rejoins but uh, Yep, he joins to a point, phone marker board goes flying and we'll get some different angle on, angles on that in a little bit but uh, the moral of the story is Tim and Blake down to the back of the field. Will is round here somewhere, Will's made up places, it was up to 6th place now so uh, Scott's moved up to 5th as well, he's, uh, he's made um, 
Mitt took advantage of all that action that was happening there. Meanwhile, Neil and Bidster are still toe to toe at the front. Neil cannot shake the Bentley of Bidster. He's finally got used to that car, and it's. Uh, <laughs> well, he's uh, he's in race three, so he's got time left, but he's uh, he's going to find it really hard to pass that Mercedes because that Mercedes has just got so much straight line speed. He's only just keeping up with it on the straight. Into Ascari we go. Camera shakes. It's quite a long zoom. And into Ascari. And Bidster is still not able to find a way past Neil Farmack. It's going to have to be on the brake somewhere. And he's getting behind in the draft and he's... He's not going to be able to pass down here. Go side by side with him, but I think uh, easily Neil will pull away on the straight as we go into the Ascari. Ascari and Scott goes off. We're looking for a way through. No way through can be found. Tim will have the advantage on speed. Neil and Bidster into Parabolica. Neil holds on to the lead. Bidster has to tuck in yet again, and he has to stick, sit, sit in the draft of that SLS. Meanwhile, everyone else, we've got Scott, Tim, and Will, three abreast into Parabolica. This is not going to end well. Three wide round para Parabolica as Tim, and how did they all get through there without taking each other off? Bit of contact with Will, but I think that's about as good as you can get by going three wide. Incredible racing here. As the two Ferraris go side by side, uh, Blake with the, with the overspeed, and we've got Tim and uh, Scott alongside each other, but Tim takes the takes the place with the overspeed of the SLS onto the brakes. Then, as everyone else, Blake folds in behind the back of the Bentley of Scott. An absolutely incredible race there, going three wide, impeccable driving by everyone. And we'll just take a little break now, and I'll have a breather while we look at the replays of the first half. Here's the replays of the first half of the race. OK, here's the first of the replays then on board with Tim to look at his start. So watch here as he breaks, the break for the corner, he just breaks too late and then it hits the back of Neil Farmack who luckily survives. But then we end up on the grass while everyone else goes through the first corner. As you can see there, everyone went through very nicely there and Tim sensibly rejoins just in a little gap there and takes himself down back to where he was, roughly fifth or fourth. Here's a replay of something that happened further back. Watch the Audi and the Ferrari as the brakes. He will gets out of shape as he brakes, hits Pash, and then Pash spins, looking to recover. Then they both decide to go the little shortcut route back to the circuit. And here's a replay of what happened to Nifty Down Ninja Print to lose his third place. He rides the curve too much, spins the car around, just loses the back end, loses grip, spins round, and now he's facing backwards. as one, two, three, four five, six cars go past and then he rejoins back in ninth place and now here's the replay of another outbreaking move over here's uh, Patch then just loses his breaking point goes on to, has, to, has to sort of go wide as Tim gets spun round and then uh, Patch then rejoins in fourth and now here's an on board with Blake on lap five watch this between uh, Tim Pash himself, so here we go, we're breaking into the chicane, watch here, Pash will outbreak himself, there he goes onto the grass, now watch Tim, turns in, he's already lost the back end of the car a bit, and Blake really had nowhere to go, Tim was mid spin, and then bang, we get hit by the Bentley of Scott, trying to, who had nowhere to go, and we'll get some other views on that now. Here's the view from Scott, so watch here, they see uh, the, the Merc and the Ferrari make contact, and we come through the corner, we're trying to avoid things as we uh, hit the back of Blake, we could have moved to the left a bit more I suppose, but uh, Scott then hitting the back of Blake. Here's an on-board with Blake on lap 5, looking at the three wide situation, down to Parabolic, and this is absolutely incredible, and brilliant job by all drivers, Scott keeps it, draw, tries to go as tight to the inside as he could, a little bit of a contact between Tim and Will, but everyone through there nicely, and then uh, Blake comes through with the draft and takes his teammate. And now back to the race. We come back from the replays, then, and it's Bidster and Neil still at the front. Bidster looking for a way through, pressurising the back of that Mercedes. He really wants to find a way through past Neil Farmack, but he can't do it. And uh, I think the only way through at the minute is actually going through him. Um, but uh, Neil Farmack doing a brilliant job of defending, but Bidster just hasn't got the top end speed in that Bentley to keep the lead. He can get in the, into the corners, but he just cannot keep up with, on, up with the straight line speed of the SLS. As uh, we've got there, we've got uh, Blake and Will together, the two Ferraris, Blake and Will together, but Blake, he's, he's still ahead of his teammate, Scott's not far behind, and we've got TY catching up in the in the, in the Aston Martin, Nifty unfortunately at the back, after uh, a, f a couple of series of mistakes uh, led him to go to the back of the field, so unfortunately for Nifty, lost time there, 
but hopefully he can try and recover somewhat and get some places back. Meanwhile, Will holds on as... Uh, oh, well, hold on a minute. They, they, they've separated and, t and Scott's gone through. Will and Blake have come together in the, for in the Ferraris and there's been some sort of incident there and uh, they've both lost a place to the Bentley of Scott and now Will's going to lose a place to T.Y. and he has done in the Aston Martin. The Aston Martin goes through into eighth place here. So T.Y. moves up in the Aston and the top end speed of that Aston means he'll definitely pull away from the Ferrari on the straight. The Ferrari might have the tighter line but the Aston Martin's top end speed will come in good here. The V12 using all the power it can. Into the chicane. We've got Neil and Bids alongside. I think they were almost alongside each other. Again, Bids closes right up with the Bentley in the corners. But the SLS pulls away on the straights. As um, into the next corner we go into the chicane. The second chicane. And both cars nicely through there. Bit of curb for Neil there. That could help open the door for Bids. And he's going for it. On the inside. Bids is going for the inside into Lesmo 1. He's on the inside. He takes the lead of the race. Bids to takes the lead. But can he hold it from Neil Farmack? Because that SLS will, uh, will be very quick on the straights. Bids needs a fantastic run here out of the second Lesmo. And he gets it as Neil Farmack runs a bit wide there. But he's pushing hard. We'll see at the next corner if there's any difference. Meanwhile, back to, the, back to these back here. Scott, Blake and T.Y. All together. T.Y. looking to get past the Ferrari as the Bentley goes wide. Scott's going to lose momentum there as Will goes even wider in the background. He's almost up, uh, back with Nifty. But uh, the Bentley loses speed and Blake will try and get alongside again. As we come back to the leaders, it is Bidster in the lead of the race with Neil behind. And he's managed to pull away through Ascari there. So he's managed to get himself a little bit of a lead here. Whether he can keep hold of it is another story because that... Oh, he's gone wide, he's gone wide as well. That's not going to help. He's pushing hard, he's gone wide. Neil Farmack is in the draft and he'll be right on him by turn one. I can guarantee that. As we go back to the others, it's Scott still leading the TY train of Blake and Will behind as well. Scott defends the inside from TY. And TY trying to go around the outside in the Aston Martin. He's going to try, but the Bentley should be able to hold the inside line quite easily. Uh, but the Aston will get the straight line speed as we see Blake go off into the wall. Loses momentum. Loses momentum and Will and Nifty go round the outside of him. Blake's race goes from bad to worse. Meanwhile, at the front of the grid, it is. Oh, there's a, a bit of time. There we are. Bidster still holds on to the lead of the race. Neil Farmack trying to go around the outside of him to get the inside into the hairpin. Here we go. Bidster and Neil alongside each other for the lead of the race. Lap 8 of 12 here. In, under the bridge, break from 170 miles an hour down to about 50. Through the chicane, both cars leaving each other room and Neil Farmack goes around the outside of the Bentley and takes the lead back. So Bids has got some work to do now. Back to the T.Y. Scott and, T and everyone else. We've got T.Y. in sixth. He's pulled ahead of Scott, Will and Blake. Will's run a bit further back now. Blake is in ninth. Nifty's in tenth. So Nifty's gone off at the chicane as well, I think. There's been a little bit of an incident there. We'll get that clarified for you later on as well. But Bids is still not giving up for this lead. He, him and Neil are having an absolute classic race here. This could be a race of legend in the making. Here we go into the Scarry chicane. And Neil Farmack holds the lead of the Bentley who goes on two wheels. Absolutely pushing. Both drivers pushing. You can visually see it by the cars squirming through the corners. Both drivers on the limit of grip available. And both cars really, really involved in this fight. You see the Bentley. You can't miss it behind the SLS. The SLS is a big car, but it just shows you how big the Bentley is. Absolutely huge. But the Bentley's got good cornering speed with it being long wheelbase and also quite wide. It's got some good grip as it goes around the corner. And get, pulls out from the draft, but he can't quite do it. He has to tuck back in and wait for opportunity here. Back to the other battles on track, Will and Blake, the two Ferraris still quite close, but not quite close enough to mount a challenge to each other yet. Back to the leaders as we go down the straight, everyone else a bit more spread out now, but the battle for the lead is still on here. Into turn one, the flames spitting out of the back of the Bentley as Neil Farmack runs it in a bit deep, and that could be business opportunity if he gets on the power early enough, and he does, he pulls out to overtake. He pulls out to overtake, but he's going to be on the outside line, but he needs to use all the run he can get because then he can keep himself as close as he can to the, back of the, to the back of that SLS and hopefully might be able to mount a challenge out of the chicane into the Lesmos again. We'll have to see what happens, but uh, into the first chicane then, under the bridge, again breaking down to second gear. Over the chicane again, look at the run the Bentley gets out the corner, but he can't do anything with it because there's a, there's a big SLS in the way 
And now, meanwhile, in the background, Woo Woo spun round. Woo Woo spun round in the background. Three, almost a full 360. Gets the car turned round, and he's only lost one place. Incredible. He's only lost one place to Pash, and Pash goes through into third place. But Woo Woo now has got to try and get past that Audi, and that Audi has been on good form here, so we'll have to see what Woo Woo can do. The two leaders holding each other up, 51s last time round, but they've still got plenty of gap to the others, so we'll have to see how that evolves later in the race. Meanwhile, Will and Blake still together, Nifty Dark Ninja at the back of the field. He's actually, even though he's at the back of the field, he's still within within touch of the two Ferraris, who are not really having the best run here, so we'll have to see if Nifty can make up a few places towards the end. Back to the leaders, Neil Farmack, Bidster, lap 9 of 12. Or lap 9 of 11, if you wanted to put it that way, because it was you who should be in a, like a 11 lap race or, or whatever. But uh, into the Parabolica, we go round the corner and Bizzy again. The Bentley is able to run that really tight line out the corner, and Neil Farmer will, will go past on the straight, but Bizzy will be able to tuck right back into the draft once he gets through. But having said that, the legs of the Bentley aren't too bad here. But there, just at that point where we cross the line is where the, the top end speed of the SLS comes in. Bizda tucks back in behind for a draft. Will he go back out? Yes, he goes back out for a look, but no, can't do it. Front end pitches down, can't quite get the move he wants, but he goes wide. Tucks the car back in, gets on the power early, and tries to get another good run out the corner, but again, the SLS holds on. Back to Pash and Woo Woo. And Woo was ahead of Pash, he's passed him, so he must have passed him on straight line speed. Woo takes his third place back, but Pash is not giving up this one without a fight. He'll, st he'll tuck back in for the draft in a moment, and he'll try and stick as close as he can to the back of that Merc. And the Audi should be slightly quicker through the chicane as well. Tim's not too far behind these two as well, so a battle for third really hotting up here. And could be potentially between three cars instead of just two as we go through. Oh, Woo Woo again making a mistake of that chicane. Does not like that chicane. Runs it, it, runs it in too deep in the second half of the chicane. And now Tim's through as well. So he's lost a place not only to Pash, but a fellow Mercedes driver of Tim. So, same car. So it's going to be harder. It's usually harder to pass the same car as Tim defends. No, you are not going down the inside of me there. You will have to wait your turn. 999. Nine, nine. You are not coming through. <laughs> As Neil Farmack and Bids are still battling out for the lead. Bids is back in the lead now. Bids is in the lead of the race from Neil Farmack and he's now pushing through the chicane. Getting all the gap he can. Down the straight though, this is where Neil Farmack will, will close in yet again. And Woo Woo and Tim side by side through Ascari and Woo Woo holds on. Wow! That was side by side through Ascari. That was some daredevil stuff there by the two by the two Mercedes drivers, but uh, both of them luckily come out the other side okay, but with them both battling, Pash will be looking at his mirror thinking, ah, brilliant, I can pull away now, get a little bit of a gap, try and breathe a little bit, and try and extend the gap with uh, only a couple laps remaining in this race. As the leaders go across the line then, here comes Neil overtaking Bidster. Remember the line's further on in Project Cars, so it could be quite a close finish between all the cars. As we go into the chicane again, Neil uses the straight line speed of the set. SLS to go through, but he goes very wide. Bidster again. Has a little sneak, uses the cut back, and then gets on the power early. And look at that over speed he gets. But again, once that SLS reaches fifth, fourth, or fifth gear, it will absolutely tear that Bentley a new one. And there it goes. It just goes straight through. No messing around. But having said that, Bids is still almost alongside him. Just tucks in behind him. Not po no point trying to go too defensive into the corner. Neil goes in a bit hot though. Very hot in fact. And bids to go through. Neil goes in too hot. Mistake from Neil and go and bids to takes the lead of the race again. The leader swapped almost every lap for the last 11 laps. Incredible, absolutely incredible racing here. As Pash then goes through in third. We've got Tim and Woo Woo in fourth and fifth. Tim's ahead of Woo Woo now, but they're both still battling each other and Pash is still rubbing his hands together thinking, aha, still brilliant, I can still keep my gap. It's exactly what we need this. As you go down the straight then, let's have a look back uh, further down the order. Will's gone down to 10th place, he's made a mistake somewhere. Will has gone down to 10th. Blake and Nifty in 8th and 9th place. Nifty's not doing too bad in this race, he's got good pace, he's just not had the luck. He's just had a, a massive spin in each race, which has just not gone his way. But, he's, but when he's recovered and before the incident, he's actually had very good pace. So uh, just shows you he's a really up-and-coming driver. Just needs to get that consistency down, and he'll be a top-notch LPB racing racer. But meanwhile, Bids has pulled away from Neil Farmack. He's really been pushing hard now, really trying to get that extra gap out. And that mistake from Neil Farmack at the second chicane. Uh, on this lap round was uh, definitely a big mistake for him and it's allowed Bids to just that extra bit of gap to get away from, from the major b bit of draft 
So we'll have to see how that goes later on in the lap because we are on the last lap of the race now. And Tim and Wu will know that as they go into battle for fourth place. And Pash has just got to try and hope those two battle each other to the death. And, uh, well, not quite that drastic, but they you know, battle each other so they lose time as Wubble goes round the outside, gets the inside for the next corner. Contact on the way out. Tim goes, eats gravel. There's mirror to mirror contact. And Tim goes on the grass, and it's just a ra that's just a little racing incident there, I think. Wubble was trying to give him as much space as he could, but Tim then yeah, finds up finding the grass as he owed and steers off the track. A little bit of uh, door to door, but uh, as you say, rubbing is racing as we go down to the chicane. Wubble into the chicane. So there's no mistake this time from Wuwu, otherwise he'll hand it to Tim on a silver platter again, but luckily no mistake this time for Wuwu. Meanwhile, Bidster with a 1.4 second lead, 1.3 second lead, sorry. Neil Farmack trying the best, that's probably the best run he's got out of the Lesmos yet. But again, Bidster's got the gap in hand. Put him moving down the other side of the straight just to try and make sure there's no major toe. Can you hear the crowd cheering on the last lap of the race? cheering for these two because it's been a fantastic race between the both of them the Bentley and the Mercedes it's been a fantastic battle from start to finish and we go down out of Ascari down to Parabolica for the last time then and bids to looking for the, for a win here at Monza but oh Wuru's lost it here Ascari he's gone round Wuru's gone round quick get the car going TY's on his way but Wuru after a fantastic race with Tim and Pash goes down to fifth and he's now lost momentum TY's going to come through uh, well, he might come through, but Bidster then takes victory here on the, on the race three. Well done to Bidster. He pressured to Neil into a mistake. Neil makes the mistake, and Bidster reaches the glory. Well done to Bidster. Takes victory. Neil Farmack a very well deserved second. It is Pash in third on the podium in the Audi. I bet he didn't expect that in the Audi for this one, but well done to Pash. Tim get, takes a fourth place after Woo Woo's mistake. And T.Y. has got Woo Woo. He has got him. T.Y. got him in the Aston Martin to finish fifth. He finishes the race. Well done, T.Y. Gets some points on the board, finally. As Woo Woo finishes a disappointing sixth after a spin. Scott finishes seventh. Best result of the night. Well done to Scott. Blake in eighth. With Nifty Dark Ninja, he's going to be in ninth. He's gone off the back of him a bit. And Will is unfortunately going to finish in tenth in this one. Not the race that Will wanted in this one. Back in tenth position. So what an epic race that was, absolutely fantastic action here at Monza and we will now take you to, to see the replays of the second half followed by the results. Here's the replays of the second half of the race. And now here's an onboard with Will on lap 6, watch this, we go into the braking zone, into the chicane. Scott just stops a little bit too early, then we just tap the back of him and then Will goes right around the outside of Scott and around the outside of his teammate and he's trying to hold on to position here, the side by side, Will runs it in a bit deep, Blakely tries to keep the inside but Will then goes a bit wide, the two teammates almost collide again, Scott's thinking it's Christmas but there's no way through and then everything resumes as it was, brilliant racing there by everyone. Here's a replay of what happened between the Ferraris on lap 6 then at the Scari. You see that Will goes into the corner, taps Blake, Blake goes through the gravel. Will then goes wide to sort of give Scott a bit of room. Blake rejoins and if we look back from Scott, there Will ends up getting passed by TY as well. So the Ferraris coming together there. Here's a look at that now from on board with Blake. So watch here, we see Will coming alongside us here into the corner. And then we go into the corner and Will has to go wide because he's on the inside. Blake tries to turn in for a, what, what would be his line, but uh, unfortunately two cars into one just don't go around there sometimes. And Blake then and Will lose places. Okay, here's a replay of a bit of a controversial incident on lap 7. Watch Blake and Scott. Blake's on the inside. Scott then, as he knows he's there. And Blake's on the inside. Scott turns in for his apex and just hits Blake straight in the side and Scott resumes in 6th place, so we'll have another look at that in a moment. Ok, now here's the onboard from Scott, so if you look here, see Blake comes alongside, and as we break, he's actually slightly ahead of the Bentley, and into the corner, and Scott just turns in, bang, have that, and Blake ends up doing that sort of a, a bit of a slide, and then Scott takes advantage in 6th place, so a possible penalty there. And now here's the replay with Blake on lap 8, we go down to the chicane, watch Nifty and Will ahead, Nifty breaks, 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 Will, Will breaks very early, Nifty goes through on the inside and then see there, boom, bang, Blake hits the back of Nifty there as Nifty just slows down for the apex but uh, yeah, Blake tapped him off there, so not good. Okay, here's the replay of how Will went to the back of the field then, watch this, he breaks as he's on the white line of the grass, it sucks him into the inside, hits the wall and has to go completely straight on. 
then he, he waits for the rest of the field to come through. As you look there, see, he waits and then they go through and he rejoins. Very fair there from Will, but unlucky. Okay, now here's a replay on the last lap then of the uh, incident between Wuru and Tim uh, on the exit of the chicane. So watch here, Wuru's on the outside, he's on the, on the inside for the next one. Turns in, he, he runs the car a bit wide, does leave Tim a bit of room, but that's the... Uh, that's what, you, that's what Tim gets for trying to keep around the outside. It is risky, but uh, it was fair and risky, but that's sometimes what happens. Here's the final replay of what happened to Wu. then. Here we go. Into the sky. He's losing the back end on the way in. And he just no can't. He tries to hold on to it. Tim luckily gets through before he goes across the other side of the track. Then we look on board with TY. Wu's coming through there. And he's just getting going. He's just about getting going. And TY now has got a good run on him. And then it's going to be a close finish down to the line. T.Y. will tuck in for the draft, but he's got definitely got the overspeed here. And then goes through on the inside. If you look on board with Wuru now, on the inside, he goes into the braking zone. Even the Aston, the Aston Martin might understeer a bit here, but he actually gets the car planted in quite well. And the Aston takes fifth. That was the replays of the second half. And now we will go to the results of race three. So it is Bidster who takes victory, well done to Bidster with Neil Farmack quite close behind in second place. We've got Pash rounding off the podium in third with Tim taking fourth place this time, off the podium for Tim this time. T uh, T.Y. actually finishes the race in fifth place, well done to T.Y. with Woo Woo in sixth, Scott finishes in seventh with Blake in eighth place. Ninth position goes to Nifty Dark Ninja with Will rounding off the ten in his Ferrari. And now we go to the overall point standings after the round eight. It is Bidster on 418 points in the lead of the championship and looking like he could win it in the next round as well. Pash on 337 in second with Tim in third on 326. Uh, then we've got Neil in fourth on 318 with 298 for Wu, his teammate in fifth. Nifty Dark Ninja sixth on 206 with 191 for Blakeney in seventh. Darren Ellis in eighth on 168. Uh, with 162 for Scott, quite close there in ninth. 10 for Will, 155. Burt on 151, quite close between them two as well. TY goes up to 12 on 133. Intrepid on 76. Growly 72. Twerdy on 62. Then in the teams, it is Bids Pidwolf that are in front on 656. With 616 for Will Mack in second. Dash is in third on 505. With 371 for Will Nee in fourth. Burt D's fifth on 317. With Growly, the Growly Ninja not too far behind on 3.07 and as you come back from the results then there is your winner in the Bentley well done to Bidster the big Bentley wins the race here at Monza fantastic race by both Bidster and Neil putting on a fantastic show and also for everyone in the LPB racing on project cars by putting on a fantastic show as well brilliant racing all round no major incidents really just a few little knocks and bangs but that's what you expect because rubbing is racing so we will see you guys next time for round nine of the championship, the penultimate round of the championship, which will be at Hockenheim GP. We'll see you then, guys. From us here at LPB Racing, take care. Thank you for watching round eight of the LPB GT3 Sprint Series. Don't forget to like and subscribe to LPB Racing for more content on our channel. And next time, it is going to be round nine of the GT3 Sprint Series at Hockenheim GP. Next time will be race one. We'll see you then.